podcast i'm back with another youtube video so today i'm gonna be reacting to with this show called best review food i think that's it best ever food review show but before i get into this video like comment subscribe and turn on post notifications to be updated you know to this video to this channel basically so let's get into this. Basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing the screen on my laptop instead of having it on picture in picture. Just to make let's, it easier. Let's get into this. Way to de-stress at the end of the day. So how do you guys, uh... Last time on our best ever Central Vietnam bike tour, Andrew got to catch Woo! ants. This better be the best damn answer in the world. I got to D-wing giant beetles. <laughs> I got the heebie-jeebies. I feel like they're all over me right now. And we both got to this, this. Comment down below, would y'all ever eat this? <laughs> in a million years, would y'all ever eat this? Like in a million years. Like, <laughs> Now, if we was by ourselves, like, if we ain't had no food or nothing, maybe I will, but... Are you again, bro? I'm good. Bro, bro. Bro. Yeah, I'm cool. Eat that. Just take a small one, Andrew. It's gonna be awesome. Oh, that sauce. No, that is strong, chunk Oh, I put too much in there. Today, we're leaving the modest mountain town of Ayunpa, heading southward to a remote village most outsiders have never even heard of. There's a river in front of us. Have you ever crossed a river before? Usually I'll use a bridge. What's the worst thing that could happen? Let's do it. It looks pretty deep. It looks like a, a moving river. This is the home of the Ede people, one of Vietnam's 54 ethnic minority groups. Here, they've maintained food customs that have never been documented before. The most special dish is made from See, to be honest, I'm gonna just say I have it good, cause well, everybody has it good at in some way, but I'm just saying for you know Americans, we have it good because um they eat anything like they eat bugs, ants, intestines from from intest const contestant and. Comment down below which one is it? Organs, contestant, intestines, you know. Really, nigga? But, um, they eat stuff like that, and we... We just eat what we know to eat. What? <laughs> Bro, what are you talking about, man? So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say I'm thankful for what kind of food <laughs> that we eat. Food. That we eat. small intestines. What are we doing with the small intestine? You have to wait to know more about it later. Andrew and I are on a mission, immersing ourselves in an unknown culture in a place where time stands still. There's just one problem. We gotta split up and take on any farm duties they give us, no matter how hard. But before the adventure begins, we need a little rocket fuel. Another beautiful morning. Good morning. How are we doing? I'm feeling great. We are really <laughs> deep into this mission right now. We're starting today with some local street food, a classic of this area. Do you know what it is in Vietnamese? I'm told this is bun mam kua. Bun is vermicelli. Mam is like rotten. Well, shrimp yeah, mam paste. Tom is shrimp paste, and this kua is crab, so I'm assuming this is like fermented crab paste. Listen, the fermented part was no secret. After this, we will not need a cup of coffee. Yeah. We're going to be pretty jacked up <clears throat> just from taking a sniff. Y'all can't eat my bitch. Yeah, I can't eat nothing that, that smells weird because I... Why he smell it like that? Let's say some boon, I got some bamboo shoots. Now, is this gonna be like a Swiss cheese or something that's kind of smelly and then you eat it, you just love it? I doubt it. Treat <laughs> I doubt it. Interesting. Kind of gentle. It does still have a slight 
rotten quality to it. Yeah, it's got that fermented aftertaste, that pungent kick behind it. Like a funky cheese. Yeah, like a funky cheese. Get a little bit of eggs, a little bit of noodle. This is pretty good. I'm delighted. Mm -mm. I like to try stuff new, but it's just not my type. Like these cards. They never are like, hey, good news. I didn't spend as much money as I thought I would. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll just say no. Your journey into Vietnam's enchanting Central Highlands continues. This is the place where pockets of once isolated tribes have only been connected for the past few decades. Today, you will join Vietnam's largest minority group, the Ede people. In their village, you'll assist them in preparing an incredible feast. All right. There is, however, one catch. One of your jobs will be easy, and one of your jobs will kind of suck. You choose who does what. Well, well, I think it's pretty obvious, yeah. What do you mean? I mean, I had to carry the fish on the beach, so it's your turn. Carry them? Look at it! Oh, oh, there, there. Oh, oh, my God! Dude, I was attacked by ants. Swarms of, of ants. They were running up my legs. That it. Mm -mm. Comment down below, would y'all ever do this? Like, I'm just saying. If y'all had to live and stuff, like eat ants and... You know, swim to get fish and stuff. Would you ever do this? Just comment down below. It's feeling. Oh my God, the quantum! Did it just stop this at all? I don't. You just you had to gather ants. Yeah. You see how many kgs? How many pounds of fish I had to carry from the beach? You think I forgot about that? Uh, don't you guys have ox? I got a tan line on my forehead. It's all white under my bandana. It looks ridiculous. I can't take it off. Are you kidding me? I was into this song. Okay, look. You think I should have to do the sucky job, and I think you should have to do the sucky job. There's only one way we can settle this. Mark the fizzies. Oh, they want the rage. known as the Chell Rail Airbase. This spot, now dilapidated and unrecognizable as anything significant, used to be an important U.S. airbase in the Central Highlands during the Vietnam War. It was manned by the South Vietnamese and the U.S. Armed Forces from roughly 59 to 75. The area around Chell Rail Airbase was home to hundreds of Highlanders with traditions dating back many centuries. This includes the Ede people, who will meet soon. But first, in order of business. We are going to race 150 meters down to the end. Producer Me will be our flag lady. When she puts her hands down, the race begins, and the winner will get to choose their task at the next location. There are several walls of bricks, and most dangerous of all, large steaming cow pots. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Ooh. Sticky rice. Sticky rice is so good. You know that Chinese rice? It's so good. This is a welcome meal for us. Right. I had a dream. Good. You were mine. Can you tell us what we have here? One is eggplants. So over the lot. The other one. It looks good, but it probably don't. Fantastic. Uncut oil. Can you pretend for the camera? <laughs> <laughs> We've made it to a small, isolated village, home of the Ede people. This is Mr. E. Bai Kubar, the patriarch to a family of 12. Today, we're going to help him prepare a once-in-a-lifetime feast. But first, a generous, welcoming meal. Can I just grab a bite of this fish? The texture of this, it's like a fish jerky, almost. I love oh. it. Mm. It's intensely salty, man. Oh, very salty. It's kind of like edge meat, to be honest. The texture is kind of leathery. Mm. And hard, but not too dry. I like it. Mm. I'm it's gonna get dry some fish, because some rice, put it all together. Like, you don't got no seasoning or so nothing. <laughs> I ate a whole chili on accident. A little, um, spicy. 
if you like. Be careful because a lot of chilies already put in that bowl. Oh, in this too? Yeah. The soup is almost like a stew. Wow, it's so fragrant. And I was expecting a much more neutral taste. That's right. It's very spicy. I don't like stuff that's a lump. I mean, I do. I just, you know, I don't know. Did you grow up in this village? Joining us, Duan, a young local who carries Ede blood from his mother. Today, Duan is a bridge between us and the locals here. So he's well from this village. How many people are in this village? It's about 1,200 people. You know, it's a beautiful village. It feels like I'm in a Vietnamese fairy tale. Picture us houses, blue skies, green everywhere, animals, and then just very kind, curious people. Right? Can you tell me a little bit more about the customs or traditions of the Ede people that separate them from other places in Vietnam? The Ede are the 12th most populous of the 54 ethnic groups in Vietnam, totaling about 330,000, mostly living in the central highland region. Their houses are on stilts, shaped like a long boat. Some stretch the length of a football field. Whenever a woman living in the house gets married, they add another section to the house, a house that she runs in this matriarchal society. The men have been to be dead because they can stand behind and support for the woman. How does it actually... Look at the dude. Every Wait, did I see the dude? Matriarchal society. The men have been to be dead because they can stand behind and support... Look at him. Like, what is he doing? What is he doing? <laughs> Yo, he's trying to get camera time. Or the woman. How does it actually work? Every children uh, have to take the family name of the mother. For any very important issue of a family, the mother give a decision. Mm. And when the girl ready to get married, the family girls have to go to the boy house to ask for marriage. What do you do? As a man, oh if you're not getting any knocks on your door, not to, uh, I can't. The first one. However, when it comes to making food, it seems like everyone pitches in. It's okay. All right, I think that's the interesting part. <gasps> the Ede people are mainly an agricultural society, raising cattle and living off the land. So slaughtering one of their own herd is a serious sacrifice and a tradition only reserved for special occasions. Fortunately, some resources are more readily available and abundant, like the recessed pools of swamp water that are home to this area's tarot roots. We are here in some kind of jungle. Oh, no. Oh, maybe that's too low. I got chose to shake the top. Guys, I'll be right back. My phone. Oh, man, that broke up really easy. Okay. okay, I'm going to try to get a few more of these. I could easily skip over the details that painfully remind viewers that our meat comes from animals. But in this village, the food processing starts from this very point. Oh, get rid of the, uh, the rotten leaf. Which they immediately plug with a bundle of herbs. This I have never <laughs> seen before. Is this okay? Okay, cut this one off. She doesn't like it. The idea is to keep the blood inside. We'll find out why later. Okay, okay. I know that the women in the 8A tribe kind of call the shots, but I wasn't expecting this. You know, they really are quite bossy. Dry grass bunched around the animal serves as fuel for a short lived fire. I don't want to be doing this alone. I'm black guy. I need help. This is my first time doing this. Then they remove the fur. Oh, where was all now? And begin the butchering. Help me. Come on. The men work with ease, performing what it seems like they've done a hundred times before. I'm on, I'm on. <sighs> okay. But everything grinds to a halt when I get involved. Oh. All these grass-eating farm animals have huge bellies because they have to digest an incredible amount of grass every day. So the chili is going to explode at any second. Skin removed. This membrane here is what holds all the intestines in. He's going to cut through it, but he's going to be careful to not actually cut through the intestines. Life is full of surprises, especially when you have an evil producer who you allow to control your show. Oh, this might be too hot for YouTube. Meanwhile, Andrew is somewhere chilling in a cool, clean jungle oasis. Oh, man. I've got to admit, this is not that fun. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm doing this correctly. Can you show me one time? Mm -mm, I will stop it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need the leaves the whole time. 
we put it in the basket? Okay. Well, you're like okay, alright. She wants me to do <laughs> Oh, this one. The big one. We always want the big ones. Alright, look. We've got enough, I've been told. It's just been great. I've really enjoyed my time. And I definitely chose the right task. I mean... Now you will take these intestines over here. Oh, boy. Oh, that, oh God, it is so much. Mm. I'm scared to rip it. Oh, there's so much. That's it's nice. not going to break. What about this? When struggling with any task, all you can do is commit. Now we will tell the intestine. So is that the part we want? Yeah, they're actually going to be using part of the liquid from inside the intestine to cook our meal today. So we've kind of cut <laughs> at the opposite side. Ooh. Action brings results. I did okay. the task more slowly, oh my God. inefficiently, and less competently than any local. But I got it done nonetheless. The accomplished feeling of victory sends a surge of dopamine up my spine. It feels good. Fantastic. That's really great. Yeah. Well, I mean, as good yeah. as it can feel given the scenario. That's Nancy. I'm sorry for the anybody that's eating this. The fire is lit, rice is being pounded, plants are being peeled. Mm -mm. The meat is chopped and prepped for a beef bonanza. Ew, and the blood's still on there. Stir fried beef with cassava leaves, beef blood salad, grilled sun dried beef, and then this, a beef soup cooked with the taro stems that's and been collected earlier. The stock is made with beef bones, green papaya, bamboo shoots, and taro stems, all boiling in water. The mixture is seasoned with a smashed mix of onions, green chilies, and salt. Finally, to thicken up the soup, they add a mixture of pounded rice and herbs. Now the star of today's feast, and the whole reason I was out there is how That's the intestine. All the preparation for the Vic cow bum. is underway right now. We're Wait, let me to say it. Vec bow. Vec bow. The small intestines. Let's take a quick look. Mmm, that's nasty. Looks super fresh. Already in the pot, cow skin, cow bones, meat, mm -mm, and ribs. I was so she put in the chilies and a bunch of mixed onions, and right now she's putting in some lemon grass at the MSG. Yes. I want to even so, eat and that. Then some herbs. I eat this the beef. This looks like sawtooth coriander. Now we go with the small intestine. Oh, so now we're going to take all that juice out. Ooh. Yes. Mm. My, oh my god. Oh. It looks like stomach acid. I mean, yeah. it's like split pea soup color green. She will add the mucus inside. What is the purpose of adding the mucus inside of here? The mucus is like the most important ingredient of this dish. It's make the dish fragrant. I'm gonna skip oh. through it. I don't want you. We have a lot of meat dishes to try. The one we should start with, our appetizer, I think is the grilled meat. Oh, oh, oh I cannot wait to drink after this. I got some dip on here. I'm going to try it out. It, it looks like beef jerky. It's so unique, the texture, huh? Yeah, it's like halfway between a jerky and a real piece of steak. Right, it's definitely more chewy, but yeah, it's great, man. Now, why do you put it in the sun? That was Comment down below, would y'all eat an intestine? Like, again, would y'all eat an intestine? Tell me what y'all think about the video. Let me get back into y'all. Peace.